I'm Alan Jay. I'm the Director of Outreach and Engagement here at ZOA. And I'd like to welcome everybody to this installment of ZOA, <laughs> entitled Israel's Rights to Judea and Samaria and the Dangers of a Palestinian State, featuring Israeli M.K. Naftali Bennett. Out of respect to time constraints imposed by the busy schedule of our esteemed guest, I'm going to skip our usual introduction so we can quickly get to our program. <laughs> Time permitting, ZOA National Board Chair Mark Levinson will moderate a brief Q&A at the end of the program. Please use the chat feature to post your questions. I would be remiss if I didn't mention our upcoming virtual gala that we're extremely excited about, featuring Ambassadors David Friedman and Gilad Erdan, Miriam Adelson and Ice Cube and many others. It's scheduled for Sunday evening, December 27th at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Please join us and I encourage you please to make a generous donation when you register. <laughs> Support to bring programs such as this and all the work that we do here at ZOA. We'll post the link in the chat feature so that you can register. We look forward to seeing you. No further ado, to our guest, I would like to pass the program to someone who needs no introduction. The leader of this great 123 year old continuously operating leader in pro-Israel, pro-Jewish advocacy, the national President of the Zionist Organization of America, Mort Klein. Mort. Thank you so much, Alan. By the way, we also have the Academy Award-winning actor, John Voigt, will be part of our gala as well. Uh, <clears throat> well, uh, M Minister M.K. Uh, Naftali Bennett, it is truly a special honor and privilege to uh, welcome you, show our appreciation for you being with us today, and introduce, uh, you, introduce you as my friend, uh, the Honorable M.K. and former Minister Naftali Bennett, leader of the Yamina party, <clears throat> which in every poll shows to be the number two party in Israel and gaining quickly on Likud. Uh, uh, MK Bennett has been a major in the Israeli army reserves and became very well known when he gave outstanding reports from the field during the terror wars uh, of the Arab terror wars against Israel. He made these outstanding reports on various TV shows that were just really lucid and clear and powerful. Uh, he uh, has his law degree from Hebrew University. Uh, he's also a very distinguished entrepreneur and businessman. He co-founded several high-tech companies, uh, which some of them dealt with anti-fraud security. And uh, Naftali, it might be worthwhile for you to use your company to help uncover the possible fraud we have here in America with the, with the voting situation. Uh, uh, MK Bennett was the chief of staff to Bibi Netanyahu, ran his campaign, which uh, enabled Bibi to become the head of Likud. Uh, he was director of the Judean and Samaria Regional Council. He has been Minister of Defense, Minister of Education, Minister of Diaspora Affairs, Minister of Economics. Uh, uh, but most importantly, he has spoken at one of our ZOA galas. We're very honored uh, to tell you that. And with all of his achievements, he's still under 50 years of age. It makes people like me feel like we have done almost nothing in our lives by comparison. But we'll continue to try. Uh, I find Naftali Bennett to be one of the most clear thinking courageous and really brilliant rational Zionists in the entire world. Naftali Bennett's agenda is ZOA's agenda. ZOA's agenda is Naftali Bennett's agenda. Uh, thank you so much, uh, uh, Minister Bennett, for uh, uh, honoring us by being with us uh, with this very special seminar. Welcome, thank you. Thanks a lot, uh, Mort, and uh, indeed, uh, I view you as a, as a true friend, a personal friend, and, and a, a huge friend uh, of the state of Israel, of Eretz Israel, the land of Israel, uh, and, and I have to say, I feel part of a family uh, in this conversation, so th this is a home turf. I wish you guys could vote. Um, <laughs> so... <clears throat> What I'd like to do over the next few minutes is, is uh, uh, give a, an overview of what's going on in Israel, uh, not, not only in terms of uh, Judea and Samaria, but a bit uh, broader. Um, what are the challenges? Uh, politically, what's going on? Because it's, a, uh, as usual, it's a tumultuous day. Uh, just a few hours ago, uh, the bill to... Um, uh, you know, to go to elections uh, passed in, uh, in its first uh, 
calling and and uh, if if uh, you know I'd give it about 50 60 percent chance that we're off to elections for the fourth time in two years I'm uh, I'm, I'm actually pretty ashamed to say that it's not it's not a source of pride but uh, here here's where we stand um, as the rest of the world obviously we're uh, uh, very much to, uh, focused on uh, on fighting corona uh, fighting the the epidemic uh, Israel has taken a, a meaningful economic hit we, we've got a very high, uh, unemployment rates. I, I have to say that prior to the uh, COVID uh, epidemic, we, we were doing uh, pretty well. Had the low unemployment rates, very low uh, um, debt to GDP ratio. We were at sixty percent, which is which is very good, but it's uh, it's a shot up to eighty percent, almost eighty percent right now. Um, and and so we're we're struggling. I have to say, on a personal note, that. Um, we, we could have done better and we ought to have done better. We, uh, Israel, uh, has all the uh, assets to, to be, you know, among the top three nations, if not the, the, the single best nation that uh, deals with Corona. In the first wave, uh, I served as defense minister uh, and I sort of took control uh, and became the de facto Corona czar. Uh, and and think we got things moving very quickly and very effectively on execution. Uh, we, we set up the first uh, uh, COVID uh, quarantine hotels, I believe, in the world. Uh, we were the, the folks who brought forward the, the insight back in March that you have to separate uh, or, or protect older people. Uh, we called it uh, take care of grandma and grandpa, and which later on uh, uh, you know be became a, a well-known thing but that was early on uh, then there was a change in government and, and this new government uh, was formed uh, it, it, it's in my opinion and again I, I, I feel at home here so I, I'm, I'm just uh, gonna speak uh, uh, frankly it, it, it's it's a uh, it's not a good government it's just a dysfunctional government uh, with a two-headed uh, uh, creature. Um, Netanyahu had, had chosen to leave us out, um, which I think was a, a poor decision, but that, that's what he decided. Uh, and and what we've been doing since then, I uh, put forward a national plan, uh, published a national plan how to control uh, COVID. This was back in March. Uh, and, and, and sort of set the vision of an action plan and, and became an alternative. And, and, uh, and that's why I think the public has been moving over uh, uh, to, to my party because uh, we've been very, very um, down to earth, very clear about what needs to happen, how to defend and protect the economy and jobs uh, and, and the government. You know, we're not the worst country in the world, but we're somewhere in the middle and, and, and Israel with one entry point, which is the Ben Gurion airport, Israel as the startup nation, Israel, uh, which is, a, as I said, a geographic uh, uh, geopolitical island uh, and very young population uh, with a median age of 30, as opposed to 40, 40 plus in, in Western Europe, we could have been uh, better and we still can. Um, uh, so so th that's one area. Um, the second uh, uh, major trend uh, is it's, it's a pretty feisty time in Israel, very polarized. Uh, so, you know, we've always had left and right, and, and, but it's, it's um, a bit more toxic than, than it ought to be. Uh, I'm, I'm as right as you can, um, both right and right. But, uh, uh, but I don't harbor hate against my political opponents. So uh, I, I remember at all times that we're, we're Am Israel and uh, whatever we do, we, we cannot uh, divide or split the country uh, and, and certainly not to divide or give up uh, parts of land of, of uh, Eretz Israel. But uh, the, the, the land and the people have to remain united while 
harboring the, the disagreements. Uh, that's what Jews do and, and, and that's fine. We, we ought to be uh, uh, debating, discussing, but not uh, hating. And uh, that, that's another negative. Uh, now on the positive, the underlying uh, um, trends longer term are, are not bad. I mean, Israel's economy still has some good fundamentals, primarily the high tech. We do have massive bureaucracy, which uh, if and when uh, we gain leadership, uh, Yamina of the, of the country, uh, the, the, the economic focus of, of uh, cutting down regulations, bureaucracy, taxes, uh, having a much freer economy is, is uh, very fundamental and we're not there yet. We have basically two, two different uh, economies. We have high tech, which is outward focused. That's where I grew up. I uh, founded and ran uh, a company and then ran another company but it was outward, so it had no problems. But the other economy, the non-high-tech economy, is, uh, is burdened by uh, uh, just a tremendous amount of, of uh, bureaucracy uh, that, that we have to fix. Uh, in terms of security, um, for the past five years, we've been, uh, <laughs> fight, we've been fighting uh, Iran um, in, in, in Syria primarily. They, they, their grand strategy is to, to envelope Israel uh, as an octopus. I, I always use the octopus analogy. The, the head of the octopus is Tehran, but they send their arms. Uh, they don't like dying. Turns out Ira Iranians don't like dying, um, but they, they're fine with others uh, fighting us. So they send They've created arms uh, in, in the north, uh, Hezbollah, which is funded by about $1 billion a year uh, directly from Iran and the uh, Quds uh, forces. Um, and, and, and they fight us. And, you know, I, I, I fought many times in Lebanon, but I was fighting the, the fingertips of, of the octopus. And uh, in, in Gaza, we've got Hamas, and the uh, jihadic uh, Islam, um, which are also massively funded by Iran. In fact, uh, jihadic Islam is uh, um, is 100% funded by Iran. Hamas is partially funded by Iran. So ain't that a great strategy? We, we, we fight their fingertips. We send our boys to, to, to fight in, in Lebanon against this octopus of fingertips. But the head of the octopus was always um, immune. So it's a very asymmetric uh, uh, situation. So a while back when I was in cabinet and later uh, defense minister, uh, uh, together with the prime minister, we, we pushed to, to stop this asymmetry. And the notion is that uh, they need to pay the price. Um, and, and, and the idea is to start crawling from the fingertips closer and closer to the head of the octopus. And there have been over the past uh, year, especially, uh, many, many activities uh, to, to, to create uh, a, a price to pay. And uh, we're doing not bad at all in, in uh, Syria. Um, and then there's the whole uh, um, nuclear effort um, where, where we're uh, profoundly worried uh, about, about uh, 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 going back to the old deal, uh, which just doesn't make sense because it gives a, a very clear path, a legitimate path for Iran to acquire a nuclear weapon, notwithstanding within, within a few years, but those years passed. Time does move, uh, and the the uh, old deal was silent about the this octopus about this terror spreading. Um, so, so we are not uh, uh, by definition opposed to any deal. We and and we understand there's a desire of the uh, incoming administration to to uh, create an, a, a deal. At, and, and our goal is, is for that deal to, to be the right deal. Uh, this is really important, but one way or another, uh, another we 
um, we will continue uh, to defend ourselves by ourselves. So it, under no circumstances will we uh, outsource our defense to anyone. Uh, and even if it's our best friend uh, uh, in the world, which is uh, the United States of America, we, we deeply appreciate the friendship, but um, you know, we're, we're never gonna ask America to send uh, soldiers to fight for us, nor do we want that to happen. We will maintain our ability uh, uh, to prevent Iran from acquiring a nuclear weapon. And the third uh, very positive development is the, the ongoing, uh, uh, and, and just one or two points here, the, the uh, Trump administration uh, was, was simply outstanding um, in, in so many uh, dimensions of, of support of Israel, whether it's um, taking out Qasem Soleimani, which is, uh, uh, I cannot exaggerate the, the impact. Uh, sometimes people do make history. There are some people that don't have a replacement, and this is one of those. Some people do have a replacement, but Qasem Soleimani uh, was so meaningful from grand strategy all the way down to micro tactics. He was one of a kind, and, and uh, this was huge. And certainly the maximum pressure sanctions were amazing. And obviously, the the you know moving the embassy and the recognizing the Golan Heights, etc. Um, but the, the, this was meaningful, and 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 we hope that uh, Iran uh, and 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 uh, stopping Iran from acquiring a nuclear weapon does not become a, a partisan uh, issue. So finally, the, the the last mega trend is the the series of uh, of uh, peace deals that uh, uh, Israel has made with uh, Bahrain, with the uh, UAE. And, and, and this is very good, um, A, because generally speaking, w w while we were never at war with any of these uh, countries, um, it, w w what it means is that the Arab world gradually understands that the Jewish state is here to, to stay. But it also, uh, what it also means is that the um, paradigm, I hate, I hate that word, but I'll use it, the, the, the paradigm of uh, Palestinians first um, has, has been proven wrong. And, and I'll just uh, explain that for many, many years, there was a sense that without uh, making peace with the uh, Palestinians, you will never be able to normalize our relationship with uh, uh, other Arab states. And uh, th this has been proven uh, untrue. Um, and, and so, so you know, it's, it's a precedent. I've, al I've always sa said that I'm, I'm okay with uh, land for peace. Uh, we're willing to accept land uh, for peace from uh, anyone who wants to provide us uh, so, but 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 now uh, you know uh, more seriously the 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 notion of uh, land for peace just uh, is is crazy, um, and and I think um, certainly this will be one of the issues that we're gonna uh, have to uh, uh, address. Um, it's no secret that I'm the guy who first put a, put uh, the the first plan called sovereignty plan. Uh, almost 10 years ago on, on the table um, in Israel. And it was seen as, as uh, crazy back then. And, and just a year ago, we were that close to applying uh, sovereignty. I, I, uh, I, I'm uh, certainly disappointed that, that uh, you know, th this was a, a very historic uh, window of opportunity and, and uh, we didn't do it, but you know, it'll happen. Uh, what we need to continue is, is uh, building our, our land, strengthening uh, uh, Israeli uh, uh, communities all across Israel, uh, the Negev, the Galilee, Judea and Samaria, and the Jordan Valley. Um, I, I, I hope and believe that uh, we don't need to enter uh, necessarily a, a confrontational relationship yet again. Uh, I, uh, you know, as far as it 
it, it uh, depends on me. I certainly would engage with any administration, but and 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 try and and uh, make the point that you know the other path has been taken so many times and failed so many times and brought uh, uh, immense damage and and and. Uh, and, and suffering on the region um, because th there is a price to pay for a failed uh, uh, so-called peace attempts. Usually it ends up with another round of violence and intifada, people die. Uh, so so it, it's not a game. It's not, and, and, and I think um, the, the incoming administration is very experienced. Uh, you know, they've been there, seen that, done that. Uh, I, I'm not, ignoring the 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 well-known uh, uh opinions but i i uh i do think that uh, you know we, we together we we need to sit down and and uh, and and think uh think thoroughly about uh how to manage uh, uh the disagreements that we might might have uh and and i certainly think it's uh, it's viable i think the, the, this whole issue is very, very low on anyone's priority list. It's not, you know, uh, looking from an American standpoint, it, it would be, I don't know, uh, far down the list. There's a gazillion other stuff. Uh, America is, is facing, uh, you know, COVID at, at uh, the very high levels and uh, economic issues. So I, I, I don't think that's, that's where I would put the energy uh, from a, an American perspective. Um, now, last point is uh, the, the, the potential elections right now. Uh, so, as I said, the, the, the bill to, um, to go to elections has uh, passed in, in its first calling, but it's uh, only the prelim preliminary one. However, um, by December 23rd, if, if no budget passes, automatically that triggers election. So even if no one does anything uh, in a, in three weeks exactly, Israel's uh, on to elections. Uh, our goal is uh, national leadership. Um, we would seek to to unite uh, all Zionist parties uh, around uh, uh, an emergency government. Um, that, that whose main focus would be to, to deal with uh, COVID, uh, the economy, um, which are the most pressing issues. Um, and, and sort of like we had a government in 1984, the Shamir Paris government, uh, they, these guys hated each other, but uh, they, they saved Israel from uh, economic disaster. We were at 400% inflation, 440%, I believe, I, that was the number in 1983, uh, and and uniting Israel, uh, they saved Israel and uh, pulled Israel out of uh, the depth of uh, Lebanon, which were two very difficult uh, um, actions there. Um, th th that's uh, th that's pretty much uh, the it. Uh, so yeah, I'm I'm uh, very focused now uh, on that. And I hope uh, Yamina becomes uh, Israel's biggest party. I think it's uh, it's not impossible. We're uh, six seats behind uh, uh, Likud. I think they're at, you know, it might be 28, 22, 29, 22. Uh, it's within the range. We're today polling the second largest party. Uh, it's the first time ever uh, since uh, Netanyahu entered the uh, politics that He's being challenged from a right-wing uh, uh, politician. Uh, since 96, it was always being challenged from uh, the left. It was uh, Paris, Barack, uh, Livni, um, Herzog, and, uh, and now uh, Gantz. So th this is a very novel uh, situation. It also um, ma manifests a, 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 a undercurrent that Israel has moved to the right. Israel over the past two decades has moved rightward by about 10%. Everyone moved move to the right. Uh, so there's a majority. So, so some may view the, the, these elections as sort of a, uh, within the right wing camp, uh, the internal uh, competition within, within the right wing and whoever wins becomes 
both head of the, the camp and the prime minister. Okay, well, uh, <clears throat> this is Mort Klein. Thank you so much, uh, Minister Bennett, uh, for uh, bringing us up to date on what's going on in Israel. <clears throat> uh, I'll ask the first question. <laughs> uh, why has there been no strong response from Israel for the Biden people yesterday demanding that the Arabs stop paying uh, uh, the Arabs to murder Jews and in return, Israel stopped building past the fence. This is a horrific moral equivalence, horrific. And it, it seems to me Israel should be strongly condemning this uh, uh, demand. And uh, secondly, a pet peeve of mine is, why doesn't Israel have a major treason law that if any Knesset member praises Hamas or Hezbollah or supports terrorism in any way, <clears throat> or makes statements clearly against uh, Israel's very survival, why do we allow mostly Israeli Arabs to remain in the Knesset while they're taking positions uh, like working with Arafat at the time, uh, 25 years ago? Why are these people, no country would allow members of their parliament to remain in parliament or run for parliament when they're taking these outrageous positions against the state that they allegedly represent? Yeah. So, uh, you know, I've, I've been one of the big drivers of, um, of the bill and the implementation of the bill that uh, prevents uh, pay to slay, it, it, it's, it's, it's pretty unbelievable. It's pretty unbelievable that in the year 2020, um, uh, uh, an actual entity, um, the, the Palestinian Authority, uh, which some people in the world consider as a potential uh, state, actually pays right now and this is not a cliche uh, or an exaggeration. It literally pays um, monthly salaries to people who murdered Jews or to their families uh, based on the, the amount of time they're sitting in jail, which obviously is, is equivalent or, or depends on how many people they killed or how bad they, they acted. So you get much more if you murdered and you get more if you murdered someone in Jerusalem. They actually have a, this menu where it's, it's, it's made public. As Minister of Defense, I took action. Uh, I put through a, a very effective decision, which was to, um, to designate uh, banks at the end of the day, this money has to enter a bank account. So to designate any bank who touches this money as a terror affiliated bank and, and it stopped. Uh, but then I was, uh, you know, kicked out of government and uh, Gantz replaced me and, and the new government uh, froze that uh, decision. So now the, the, the money continues uh, flowing. I don't have a good answer um, because I, all I can say is that as defense minister, I acted. I didn't uh, talk. It was pretty, it worked. Be, the, the, the people got frustrated. They started throwing stones and burning up banks uh, as a protest for why are these banks not paying us the money, the murder money, uh, blood money we uh, deserve. So all I would say more here is before we talk about others, we, we should be focused on our own actions because we have the power to stop it. Uh, but someone, I guess, is afraid of uh, resistance or, or frustration. But, uh, you know, I, I, whenever I always look at, at our own responsibility first before I blame others. Um, now, uh, in, in regard to the, the um, some of the members of Knesset uh, who, who um, support terror, it, again, that's, uh, you know, I, I, I will not accept that. Um, I, I wanna differentiate and make a clear distinction between um, the, the Arab public in, in Israel, which uh, uh, many Israeli Arabs wanna be part and parcel of Israel they want to uh, uh, ultimately serve perhaps a, a national service, perhaps in the future, some may even want in the army, some do already, like the Druze do. 
uh, and differentiate between them and uh, some of their representatives, which really are reprehensible. Um, but again, the, 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 it's up to the government to push through uh, legislation that, uh, that, that will not allow that to happen and, uh, and, and, and do it seriously. It's, it's crazy, you're right, it's crazy. I've got time more for two more questions uh, because they're already signaling and it's a pretty political <laughs> evening here. Okay, Mark Levinson. Hi, Mr. Minister Bennett. It's a pleasure to see you again. Uh, COA is so ideolo ideologically aligned with many of your views and we certainly wish you much, much Hatzlacha. Um, we were very concerned uh, with an article we saw this morning, which, uh, which said that the Israeli government uh, agreed to not only release the tax revenues to the Palestinians, we've talked about this issue, but they actually did not deduct the terror payments, which we certainly thought was, was kind of a, a prerequisite. That really troubled us. We also have been seeing a, a number of Israeli government officials talking about uh, you know, what steps might be needed or might be constructive in terms of getting the Palestinians back to the negotiating table. It really is shocking and, and silly to us that with what's gone on with, with the UAE and, and the other efforts, that people are needlessly wasting their time on, on chasing that and almost begging the Palestinians to come back. So could you please comment on a couple of those items and if we have the opportunity, we'll sneak in one more question from the uh, audience. Sure. Uh, thank you, uh, Mark. Um, you know, you're preaching to the choir. Uh, I'm in opposition. And again, also on the uh, offsetting of uh, the terror money with the payments, uh, that's something that I implemented as defense minister. I'm the guy who brought to the security cabinet the report that requires then the cabinet to, to uh, do that offsetting. Uh, and, and, and I did it, even though there was tremendous pressure not to do it. I, I don't want to explain from where and whom. Um, so you're right. And again, uh, uh, you know, if and when uh, uh, we, we lead the country in our, our position, uh, I, I don't expect that we'll um, lead this very feeble approach. Uh, I think it's unacceptable. I think uh, there, there's no... You know, there's no way to defend terror money. It's not, it's not a matter of ideology. Just stop paying th th these freaking terrorists and, and everything will be okay. Stop paying murderers. I, I cannot imagine any other country in the world that would allow this to happen. So I, I can only uh, um, agree to the question and it's not as difficult. You know, there, there's a tendency um, to, to sort of inject fear into into our into our mindset, uh, you know, be always afraid of what this will do and what this will do. Uh, I, I when uh, when I was defense minister, one of the thir first actions that was brought over to me um, that I initiated and asked was to approve uh, building a new uh, neighborhood in Hebron, uh, in Hebron. Uh, after 20 years that no, no new neighborhoods, uh, Jewish neighborhoods were built. And I decided to go ahead. And then the, I, I got this sort of a tidal wave of pressure. It'll bring a third intifada. It'll do this. It'll do that. Uh, a gazillion different, uh, 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 you know, doomsday scenarios. I, I didn't just neglect it. I didn't say, oh, I don't care. I actually learned uh, and, and, and dived into the details. And after a few meetings, I, I made the decision and I told the security forces, I hear you, I hear your concerns, here's my decision. And my decision is to approve right away, effectively tomorrow, uh, the new, uh, building a new neighborhood. And it's your job to provide security, go do it. And that's what we did. And it's moving forward. So, and 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 these doomsday scenarios didn't uh, materialize. By the way, they could have, but you can't not do the right thing because of uh, of uh, threats of violence. You have to do the right thing, even if there's threats of violence. Uh, otherwise, you're 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 giving up. Uh, you know, 
on, on what's important to you. I see Fred Fisher is asking Palestinian state. Uh, I, I uh, am, am a very clear uh, an early opposer of, uh, of a Palestinian state. I think it, it, it would be the biggest mistake in Israel's history. Um, and I can go on for hours, but you just know that. So at this point, again, I, uh, I'm gonna have to uh, depart, but I wanna thank you, Mark. I wanna thank you, Mort. I wanna thank uh, all of you uh, for your ongoing support. Um, for the state of Israel, for the land of Israel, for the people of Israel, we're strong. It's it's a it's a, not a simple time for you guys, for us. We all understand it, but uh, we're all together, and I, I view all of us as as one. So um, uh, thank you so much, and I appreciate this uh, unique opportunity uh, to, to having uh, spoken uh, with you. Thank you very much. Hey. Thank you very much for joining us. When uh, COVID finishes and we continue with our next uh, ZOA annual VIP trip to Israel, we are hoping you'll join us in the Inbal Hotel as one of our keynote speakers. Well, I'm and, maybe in a different, and maybe in a different position than now. Uh, we wish you all the best, all the Hatzlacha, and uh, I just want to uh, send your regards from uh, our head of our Israel office, Dana Luz, who's a good friend of yours, who's on this webinar as well. Terrific addition to the ZOA team. So thank, thank you, you very much and have a great week. Mort. Okay, well, uh, <clears throat> I say the same. I'm, I'm grateful that you're there, Naftali Bennett. You promote the things we care about here as a promoting strong U.S.-Israel relations. A strong Israel and a safe Israel is in America's interest. You promote that. You're one of the few voices that simply tell the truth of the Arab Islamic war against Israel and the West. And uh, we uh, wish you the best if uh, uh, elections will come to pass in the next few weeks. Thank you for honoring us uh, for being part of this very important ZOA seminar.